six yards of stuff for to make a yellow gown, a pair of lace boots with big, big heels on them, and brassy eyes. A hat is suited for a wedding day, a fine tooth comb. <laughs> to be sent with three barrels of porter in Jimmy Farrell's creel cart on the evening of the common fair to Mr. Michael James Flaherty with the best compliments of this season. Margaret Flaherty. Where's himself? He's coming. Seamus Mulleray, wine and spirit dealer, Castle Bar. I didn't see him on the road. How would you see him at a dark night this half hour gone by? I stood a while outside, wondering would I have a right to pass on, or to walk in and see you, Piggy and Mike. And I could hear the cows sighing and breathing in the stillness of the air. And not a step move in any place, from this gate to the bridge. It's above at the crossroad, you meet him Billy Cullen. And a couple more are going along with him to Cage Cassidy's wake. And he's going that late in the dark night. He is surely, and leaving me lonesome on the scrub of the hill. Isn't it long the nights are now, Sean Q, to be leaving a poor girl with her own self, counting the hours to the dawn of day? If they are, when we're wedded in a short while, you'll have no call to complain. For I've little will to go walking off to wakes or weddings in the dark night. You're making mighty certain to need the tile, would you now? Aren't we after making a good bargain? The way we're only waiting these days for Father Riley's dispensation from the bishop or the court of Rome. It's a wonder, Shanine, the Holy Father to be taking notice of the likes of you. For if I was him, I wouldn't bother with this place. Where you'll meet none but red linen as a squint in his eye and Pacin is lame in his heel. Well, the Mad Maud Rannies were driven from California, and they lost in their wits. We're a queer lot these times to go traveling the Holy Father on his sacred seat. If we are, we're as good this place as another, maybe, and as good these days as we were forever. <laughs> as good, is it? Where now you meet the like of Deneen Sullivan, knocked the eye from a paler. <laughs> or Marcus Quinn, God rest him, got six months for meme and news, <gasps> and he, uh, a great warrant for telling stories of Holy Ireland till he'd have the old women shedding down tears about their feet. Where will you find the like of them, I am saying? If you don't, it's a good job, maybe. For Father Riley has small conceit to have that kind walking around talking to the girls. Stop tormenting me with Father Riley. When I'm asking only what way I'll pass these twelve hours of dark and not take me death with the fear. Will I bet you the widow Quinn, maybe? Something like of that murderer. Not surely. Then I'm thinking himself will stop along with you when he sees you taken on. For it will be a long, for long night time with great darkness. And, and I'm after feeling a kind of fellow above in the furzy ditch, groaning out like a maddened dog. But the way it's good cause you have maybe to be fearing now. What's that? Is it a man you see? I couldn't see him at all. But I heard him groaning out and breaking his heart. It should have been a young man from his words speaking. And you never went near to see was he hurt or what ailed him at all? I did not, Pegeen Mike. It was a dark, lonesome place to be here in the like of him. Well, you're a daring fella. <laughs> and if they find his corpse stretched above in the jewels of dawn, what do you say then to the peelers, or the justice of the peace? I wasn't thinking of that. Oh, for the love of God, Pegeen Mike, don't let on I was speaking of him. Don't tell your father the men is coming above. For if they heard that story, there'd be great blab in his night at the wake. I may be tell them, I may be not. They're coming at the door. What do you wish them saying? Wish yourself. God bless you. Ah, the blessing of God on this place. God bless you, please. Sit down now and take your rest. How is it you are, Shan Kyo? Are you crossing over the sand with us to keep Cassidy's wake? I am not, Michael James. I'm going home the shortcuts to my bed. He's right, too. And have you no shame, Michael James, to be quitting off for the whole night and leaving myself lonesome in the shop? Now, isn't it the same whether I go for the whole night or part only? Yeah, I'm thinking it's a queer daughter you are if you'd have me crossing backward with the stick of the dead women with a drop taken. <laughs> if I'm a queer daughter, it's a queer father to be leaving me lonesome these twelve hours of dark. And I, piling the 
turf with the dogs barking and the calves mooing and me old teeth rattling with the fear. Oh, now who is there to hurt you? Oh, and you, a fine hardy girl, with not the of any two men in the place. <laughs> Isn't there the harvest place, the tongue's red for drink? And the ten tinkers is camped in the East Glen. And the thousand militia, bad cess to them walking idly through the land. There's lot surely to hurt me, and I won't stop alone in it. Let himself do what he will. If you're that a fear, let Sean Gill stop along with you. It's the will of God I'm thinking himself should be looking to you now, please. Uh, I would, and welcome, Michael James. But I'm a fear of Father Riley. I want to talk with the Holy Father or the Cardinals of Rome be saying, if I did the like of that. Oh, God, help you. Can't you sit in by the heart of delight letting herself beyond in a room? And I'm thinking you'll do that, surely. For, I you tell, there's a queer fellow above. Going mad, maybe. Getting his death in the gripe of a ditch. So she'd be safer with someone here tonight. I'm a fear to Father Riley, I'm saying. Let you not be tempting me, and we near married itself. Lock him in the West Room. Ah. He'll stay there and have no sin to be tenant to the priest. <laughs> Go off now. Let me out to the door, Michael James. For the love of Almighty God. Oh, let me out of it. Let me out, and may God grant you his indulgence in the hour of need. Stop oh. your noise and, and sit down by the fire. Oh, I don't run in the saints of God. Where will I hide myself today? St. Joseph and St. Patrick and St. Bridget and St. James. Have mercy on me now. Oh, let's go. Oh, 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 leave me go, my oh, oh, dear. Leave me go, you old pagan. Leave me go. Oh, 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 get the curse of the priest on you. The scarlet hood and bitches of the court of the cross. Oh, 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 oh. Bye bye. <laughs> Now there's the coat of a Christian man. Hey! I am a saint in glory this day in the lonesome west. And by the will of God, I've got you a decent man, Begin. You'll have no call to go spying after. If you've a score of young girls, maybe weeding in your fields. What right of you to be making game of a poor fella for minding the priest when it's your own the fault is? Not paying a penny patch boy to stand along with me and give me courage and the door to me work. Now, where would I get a pot boy? Would you have me send the bell and scream it to the streets of Castle Bay? Michael Jim! What ails you? The queer guy fellas beyond looking over the ditch. He's come up, I'm thinking, stealing your hands. Ah! God help me! He's following me now! And if he's heard what I said, he'll be having my life, and I going home won't do in the darkness of the night. God save you kindly. God save you kindly. What will you for a glass of water on the other house? for them to strike walking. He's got the first one. Let you come up then by the fire. You're looking famished with the cold. Let's reward you. Is it often the place to be coming into this place, Master of the House? Oh. If you come in better hours, You'd have seen license for sale of beer and spirits to be consumed on premises written in white letters above the door. And what would the police want spying on me? With not a decent house within four miles, so every living Christian's a bona fide to save one widow alone. It's a safe house, sir. Uh, is it yourself there in the police? You're wanting me. There's many wanting. Many, surely. With the broken harvest. 
Should be larceny, I'm thinking. I have it in my mind. It was a different word. But a bigger. <laughs> There's a queer lad. Were you never slapped in school, young fella, that you don't know the name of your deed? <laughs> I'm slow at learning. A middle and scholar only. If you're a dunce itself, you've every right to know that larceny is robbing and stealing. Is it for the like of that you want? No, the son of a strong farmer. God rest his soul. Could have bought up the whole of your old house a while since from the butt of his tail pocket and not missed the way to the gun. Oh, it's not stealing. It's maybe something big. Like, it's maybe something big. Well, he's a wicked looking young fella. <laughs> maybe he followed after a young woman on a lonesome night. <laughs> Well, the saints for me, sir. I was at all times a decent lad. You're a silly man, Jimmy Farrell. What? He said his father was a farmer a while since, and there's himself now in a poor state. Maybe the land was grand from him, and he did what any decent man would do. Oh, was it bailiffs? Oh, the devil one. Agents. The one. Landlord. I'm not at all insane. What a land you see the like of them stories in any little paper of a monster town. But I am not calling to mind any parson gentle. Simple. Judge or jury didn't like a mean. Well, that lad's a puzzle the world. <laughs> He'd be Dan Davy Circus. Aye. Or the Holy Missioners making sermons on the ability of man. <laughs> Try him again, Vinny. Come on. Did you strike golden guineas on a sodder, young fellow? Or shilling coins, it's set. I did not, mister. Not a sixpence or a farthing coin. Well, did you did you marry three wives, maybe? Uh, <laughs> I'm told there's a sprinkling of done that among the holy Luthers of the preaching uh, north. I never married with a one, let alone with a couple or three. Maybe he was off fighting for the boars. Oh, the like of the man be all was just to be hanged, quartered, and drawn. Was that Kruger? Where are you off each oh. young fellow? Fighting bloody wars for Kruger and the freedom of the boars. I never left me on parish till Tuesday was weak. He's done nothing so. If you didn't commit murder, or a bad nasty thing, or false coining, or robbery, or butchery, or the like of them, there isn't anything would be worth your troubling for to run from now. You did nothing at all. What's well, some kindly thing to say to a poor orphan traveller? That's a prison behind him and hanging before him, and hell's gap gaping below. You always say it. You did nothing at all. A soft lad the like of you wouldn't slit the windpipe of a screeching sow. You're <laughs> <laughs> not speaking the truth. Not speaking the truth, is it? Would you have me knock the head of you with the butt of a rope? Oh, don't strike me! I killed me poor father. Tuesday was a week for doing the like of that. <laughs> is it killed your father? With the help of God, I did surely. But the Holy Immaculate Mother may intercede for us soul. There's a daring fella. Glory be to God. That would be a hanging cry, Mr. Honey. You should have had good reason for doing the like of that. It was a dirty man, God forgive him. And he was getting old and crusty the way I couldn't put up with him, Tom. And you shot him dead. I never used weapons. I have no license and I'm a lawfare man. Uh, it was with a hilted knife, maybe. Oh, I'm told in the big world it's bloody knives. Did you take me for a slaughter, boy? You never hanged him. The way Jimmy Farrell hanged his dog from the license <laughs> and had a screech and a wriggling three hours at the butt of a string and himself swearing it was a dead dog and the peeler swearing it had life. I do not think it from the peelers. I just missed the loy and let fall the edge of it on the ridge of his skull. When he went down at my feet like an empty sack and never let a grunt to grow at all. At what way weren't you hanged, mister? Did you bury him then? I, I Buried him then. Wasn't I digging spots in the field? Ah. And the peelers never followed after you the eleven days that you're out. Never one of them. And I walk it forward facing hog, dog, or devil on the highway of the road. Uh, it's only a common weekday kind of murderer that lad should be trusted there, Carlos. Right. And that man should be a great terror when his temper's roused. Oh. Yeah, that he should. So where was it, Mr. Honey, that you did the deed? Uh, a distant place, Master of the House. A windy corner of high distant hills. He's a close man, and he's right, surely. That'd be a lad with the sense of Solomon to have for a pot boy, Michael James. If it's the truth, you're seeking one at all. The Peelers is fearing him. And if you'd that lad in the house, there isn't one of them would come smelling around if the dogs itself were lapping pot sheet from the dung pit of the yard. Oh, oh, bravery's a treasure in a lonesome place. <laughs> and a, a lad would kill his father, I'm thinking. Would face a foxy devil with a pitchfork on the flags of hell. It's the truth they're saying. And if I'd that lad in the house, 
I wouldn't be fearing the loosed khaki cutthroats or the walking dead. Oh God, it's would you think it well to stop here, Mr. Honey, and be potboy if we gave you good wages and didn't drown you with the way to work? That'd be a queer kind to bring into a decent, quiet household with the like of Peggy Mike. Who's speaking to you? A bloody handed Mr. Honey! Take your fool and bring your like at all! And you, young fella, you'd have a right to stop, I ain't thinking. And we do our all and utmost to content your needs. And I'd be safe this place from the searching law. Oh, you would, surely. <laughs> if they're not fearing you itself, the peelers in this place is decent, poor, doughty fellows. Wouldn't touch a cur dog and not give warning in the dead of night. I'll let you stop a short while anyhow. Aren't you destroyed walking with your feet and bleed and blisters, and your whole skin needing washing like a wig sheep? <laughs> well, it's a nice room. And if it's not humbug in the yard. I know. I'm thinking that I'll surely stay. <laughs> Ah, ah, no, by the grace of God, we are safe for me safe this night. Ah, with a man killed his father holding danger from the door. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, did you come on, my good James? Oh, right. We're not the best of drunk at the wake. Yeah. Come on. Oh, let's go, my good James. And begging your pardon, Mr. Honey. What would we be calling you for, we'd like to know? Christopher Mahon. <laughs> well, God bless you, Christy. And good rest. Till we meet again, when the sun be rising to the noon of day. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Find the other bad boy. Eh? <laughs> Are you wanting me to stop along with you and keep you from harm? Didn't you say you were fearing Father Riley? There'd be no harm in staying now, I'm thinking, and himself in it too. You wouldn't stay when there was need for you. I let you step off nimble this time, but there's none. It didn't I say it was Father Riley Go that Go on was... then, to Father Riley, and let him put it in the Holy Brotherhoods, and leave that lad to me. Hey, if I need the widow quiz. Go on, I'm saying, ugh! And don't be waking this place with your eyes. That lad would wear the spirits from the saints of peace. I'm tired, Shirley. Uh, walking wild, ah, 11 days. I'm like a fearful of night. You should have had great people in your family, I'm thinking, with the little small feet you have. And you with the kind of quality name, the, the like of what you'd find on the great powers and potentates of France and Spain. We were great, Charlie. With wide and windy acres of rich monster land. Wasn't I telling you? And you, a fine, handsome young fella, with a noble brow. Was it me? Aye. Did you never hear that from the young girls where you come from in the west or south? I do not, then. <coughs> oh, they're bloody liars in the naked parish where I grew them on. <laughs> <laughs> if they aren't, so, you've heard it these days, I'm thinking. And you, walking the world, telling out your story to young girls or old. I've told my story in no place till this night again, Mike. And it's foolish I was here, maybe, to be talking free. But you're decent people, and yourself a kindly woman, the way I wasn't fearing at all. <laughs> you've said the like of that, maybe. And every cot and cabin where you've met a young girl on your way. I've said it nowhere till this night, I'm telling you, for I've seen none the like of you the eleven long days I am walking there. <sighs> looking over a low ditch or a high ditch on my north or south, into stony scattered fields or stripes of bog, where you'd see. Young lumber girls and fine prancing women making laughter with the men. <laughs> if you were to strike traveling, you'd have as much talk in Streely, I'm thinking, as Owen Rose Sullivan, <laughs> or the poets of the Deeple Bay. And I've heard all times it's the poets are your like. 
Fine, fiery fellows with great rages when their tempers roused. You have a, you have a power of rings, God bless you. And would there be any offense if I was asking? Are you single now? What would I want wedding so young? Where like so? I never killed me father. I'd be afeard to do that. Except I was the like of yourself with blind rage as turned me within. For I'm thinking, you should have had great tussling when the end was come. We had not then. It was a hard woman who was come over the hill. And if he was always a crusty kind, when the hard woman was said to the man, not the devil himself, nor his forefathers could put up with him at all. And isn't it a great wonder that one wasn't fearing you? It took a day to kill me father, not a person in Ireland knew the kind I was. And neither. Drinking, waking, eating, sleeping. A quiet, simple poor fellow with no man giving me heed. <laughs> it was the girls giving you heed, maybe. Oh. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's most conceit you'd have to be gaming with their like. Not the girls itself. And I want to tell you a lie. There wasn't a parson keeping me in the place saving only the dumb beasts of the field. And I, thinking you should have been living the like of a king of Norway or the eastern world. <laughs> the like of a king, is it? And I, after toiling, moiling, dodging, digging from dawn till dusk, but never a sight of joy or sport, saving only when I was abroad in the dark night. Poaching rabbits on the hills, for I was a devil to poach, God forgive me. And I near about six months more, going with the dumb fork and stabbing a fish. And is that you'd call sport, is it? To be abroad in the darkness with yourself alone. I did, God help me. And now I'd be as happy as the sunshine on St. Martin's Day, watching the light pass the north through the patches of fog. Until I hear a rabbit start to screech, and then I'd go running into the first. And then when I'd my full share, I'd come walking down where you'd see the ducks and the geese stretched sleeping in the highway of the road. Before I passed the hill, I'd hear himself snoring out. A loud, lonesome snore he'd be making at all times the while he was sleeping. A new man be raging at all times the while he was waking. Like a gaudy officer in here, cursing and damning and swearing those. Providence and mercy, spare us all. Ah, oh, it's that you'd say, surely, if you had seen him and he after weeks of drinking, rising up in the red dawn, or before it's maybe, and going out into the yard, naked as an ash tree in the moon of May, and shine claws against the visage of the stars until he put the fear of death into the bodies and the screeched sows. I'd be well and I have feared of that lodge myself, I am thinking. And there was no one in it but the two of you alone. The devil alone. Though he had sons and daughters walking all great states and territories of the world, not a one of them to this day but would put their seven curses on them. And they rouse it to let a call for a sneeze, maybe, in the deadness of the night. <laughs> well, you should have been a queer lot. I never cursed me father like that, though I'm twenty and more years of age. Then you'd have cursed mine, I'm telling you. But he a man would never pay peace to any. Save when he get two months or three, or locked in the asylums for battering peelers or assaulting men. The way it was a bitter life he let me. Until I did up a Tuesday half his school. in this place, Christy Mahan. In none to trouble you. And it's near time a fine lad like you should have your good share of the earth. It is time, surely. <laughs> Light ceiling fellow. With your night strengthen me. A bravery of the kind. Oh, glory! It's like a And this last while I'm in terror of the feelers and the walking dead. Uh, who's there? Me? Who's me? The widow Quinn. to be sleepy. Or well, she found you were such a warrant to talk, she'll be stringing gabble to the dawn of day. <coughs> what day is ya? Uh, what is it you're watching at this hour of the night? I'm after meeting Sean Kyo and Father Riley below, who told me of your curiosity, man, and they fearing by this time he was maybe roaring, romping on your hands with drink. A look now as he roaring, and he stretched out drowsy with the supper in his mug of milk. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh, walk down and tell that to Father Riley and Shanine Cure. I'll not see them again, for I've their word to lead that lad forward for to lodge with me. This night, is it? This night. It isn't fitting, says the priest deemed to have his likeness lodging with an orphaned girl. God save you, mister. <coughs> God save you, kindly. Well, aren't you a little smiling fellow? <laughs> it should have been great and bitter torments did rouse your spirits to a deed of blood. It should, maybe. It's more than maybe, I'm saying, and it'd soften my heart to see you sitting so simple with your cup and cake, and you fitter to be saying your catechism than slaying your da. There's <laughs> talking. When any see, he's fit to be holding his head high with the wonders of the world. Walk on from this. I'll not have him tormented, and he destroyed his traveling since Tuesday was a week. We'll be walking surely when his supper's done. And you'll find we're great company, young fellow, when it's of the like of you and me, you'd hear the penny poets singing in an August fair. Did you kill your father? Oh, she <laughs> did not. She hit himself with a warm pick. And the rusted poison did corrode his blood the way he never offered it and died after. That was a sneaky kind of murder did win small glory with the boys itself. If it didn't, maybe all knows a widow woman has buried her children and destroyed her man is a wiser comrade for a young lad than a girl the like of you who'd go helter-skeltering after any man would let you a wink upon the road. Oh, and just say that, Widow Quinn! And you, gasping with the rage, you had race in the hill beyond to look on his face! Me, is it? Well, Father Riley has cuteness to divide you now. There's great temptation in a man did slay his da, and we'd best be going, young fellow, so rise up and come with me. He'll not stir. He's patched by in this place, and I am not having stolen off and kidnapped by themselves abroad. It'd be a crazy pot boy if lodge him in a shabine where he works by day. So you'd have a right to come on, young fellow, till you see my little house seen a perch off on the rising hill. Wait till morning, Christy Martin. Wait till you see her leaky thatch is going more patch and she'll be the And she will have the trap itself to keep in order her place oh, at all. When you see me contriving in my little gardens, Christy Martin, you swear the Lord God forced me to be living low. God and Mary 
and St. Patrick, bless you and reward you for your kindly talk. What's well, a clean bed? And soft with it. This is a great luck and company at one me in the end of time. Two fine women fighting for the likes of me. Till I'm thinking this night. Wasn't I a foolish fellow not to have killed my father in the years gone by? <laughs> <laughs> I'm darkin', I'm sick and tired of working. No more no dig the fates, no longer I'll be fooled. Not sure as my name is Carney, I'll go off to California. Well, instead of digging fates, I'll be digging lumps of gold. <laughs> off a hundred beyond. It's in there. Score that's above. Eighty jugs. Huh! Six cups. And a broken one. Two plates. A pair of glasses. School bottles of school uh, bottles of schoolmaster be hard said to count in a, enough in him I'm thinking to drunken all the wealth and wisdom of the county clerk. Huh. Aye. There's your boots now. Nice and decent for our evenings use. Isn't a grand posher she has? This be a fine place to be my whole life talking out with swearing Christians and placing the old dogs and cat. No, it's talking about smoking my pipe and drinking my fill. Never a day's work, but John Cork at an odd time. Wiping a glass or rinse another shiny tumbler for a decent man. <laughs> Cousin. Didn't I know I was right, the handsome? <laughs> Those the devils will nearly had the hundred twist a squint across an angel's brow. And I'll be growing fine from this day. The way I'll have a soft and lovely skin on me. It won't be like the clumsy young fellows to be plowing at all times in the earth and the dome. Is she coming again? Go! Go! Stranger girls! Uh -huh. Come on, Come on, Come on hide yourself. I mean, poor enough naked to the world. I must go to the room to undress again. There's nobody in it. It's fair enough for them both to be out walking the hill. Go in! Uh, oh! Sean Kyo was making game of us, and there's no such man in it at all.
both of them looking up keen. Sick of the nanny goats. The way she'd have a supple goat's milk for to my teeth. And asking your pardon, is it you as the man killed his father? I am, God help me. And weighty size. And I've run up with a pack of butter. Lord be a poor thing to have you all eating your spuds dry. And you have to run in such a great way since you did destroy your dad. Thank you kindly. <laughs> and I brought you a little cut of a cake. For you should have a thin stomach on you. And you that length. Walk in the world. And they brought oh. you a little lay in pullets. Wild and all she is. Was crushed at the fall of night by the curious car. You look after that breast, mister. It's burst in Shirley. Will you pinch it? <laughs> Is your right hand to have sacred or she was called? Oh, it's a glass you have! <laughs> <laughs> See, I've never seen a man with a glass held to his back. Then it kills their father. It is a vain man, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Spuds in his cold, slope, and stony devil's patch of a field. Oh, and you weren't asking money of him, or making talk of getting a wife would drive him from his farm. I, I did not then. But there I was, digging, yeah. and digging, and. Uh... Yo, Squid Ticket, you obsessive! Let you walk down now and tell the Widow Casey, you tell, the, tell the police you'll marry the Widow Casey in a score of days! But what kind was she? <gasps> a walking tower from beyond the hills. And she two score in five years. And two hundred weights and five pounds in the weighing scales. With a limpid leg on her and a blinded eye. And she a woman of naught and misbehavior with the old and the old. Oh, glory, 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 glory. But what did he want to drive you to wed with her? He was letting on. I was wanting to protect her from the harshness of the world. And he without a pot in him the whole while, but how he'd have her hot to live in and her gold to drink. This may be worse than a dry hearth and a widow woman and your glass at night. <laughs> so you hit him then? I oh, did not. Well, I will twitter, says I. For all know, she did suckle me for six weeks <laughs> when I came into the world. And she a had this day, has a tongue on her, has the crows and seabirds scattered the way they wouldn't cast a shadow on her garden with the dread of a curse. And that one should be right company. <laughs> not my her. Did you kill him then? She spoke up for the like of yours, says he. Go on now, or I'll flatten you out like a crawling beast that's passed under the tree. You will not if I can help it, says he. Go on, says he, or I'll have the devil making goddess of your lips tonight. You will not if I can help it, says I. You were right, surely. With that, the sun came out between a cloud and a hill, and it shone in green in my face. God have mercy on your soul, says he, lift it aside, or on your own, says I, raise it to the way. Oh, that's a grand story. <laughs> He gave a drive with the side, and I gave a lap to the east. Then I turned around with my back to the north, hit on the ridge of his skull, laid him stretched out, and he split to the knob of his gullet. I'm thinking the Lord God sent him this road to make a second husband to the widow Quinn, oh. and she with a great yarn and to be wedded, though all dread her here. Oh. Lift him on her knees, sir, Tansy. <laughs> Don't tease him. Will your hero, Shirley, let you drink us a pea with your arms linked, like young Danish lovers in the theater song? There now, I drink a health to the wonders of the Western world, the pirates, the preachers, the What 
What is it you're wanting? An ounce of tobacco? Oh. Have you tuppence? I forgot me purse. <laughs> then you best be getting it, and not be fooling us here. Is it your wanton widow Quinn? <laughs> a pen of the starch. And you, without a white shift or shirt in your whole family since the drying of the flood. <laughs> I've no starch for the like of you. And let you go on now to kill a muck. Well, you're mighty huffy this day, Peggy Mike. And you, young fellow. <laughs> let you not forget the sports and racing when the noon is by. that rubbish and put them cups away. Shove in that bench by the wall and hang that glass on the nail. What disturbs it at all? I was making myself decent only. And this is a fine country for young lovely girls. Wish you're talking of girls. When anywhere should be decent in a place. Wish I'm saying. It was a lawyer the like of that I killed me father. You've told me that story six times since the dawn of day. <laughs> it's a queer thing you wouldn't care to be hearing it and them girls after walking four miles to be listening to me now. Four miles? <laughs> Didn't himself say there was only bona fides living in the place? It's bona fides by the road they are. But that lot came over the river lepping the stones. It's not three perches when you go like that. And I was down this morning, looking at all the papers the post boy does have in his bag. For there was great news this day, Christopher Mahon. Is it news of my murder? <laughs> murder indeed. A murder da. There was not, but the story built half a page of the hanging of a man. <laughs> that should be a fearful end, young fella. And it worst of all for a man destroyed his da, for the like of him would get small mercies. And when it's dead he is, they put him in a narrow grave with cheap sack and wrapping around it. They pour down quick lime on his head, the way you'd see a woman pour any fish fresh from a cup. Oh. oh. God help me. Are you thinking I'm safe? You were saying at the fall of night I was shut of jeopardy and I hear with yourselves. You'll be shut of jeopardy no place if you go talking with a pack of wild girls the like of them. You'll be walking around with the peelers, talking whispers at the fall of night. And you're thinking they tell... Who knows? God help ya. What joy would they have to bring higher to the likes of me? It's queer choice they have, and who knows the thing they do? If it should make the green stones cry itself to think of you swaying and swiveling at the butt of a rope? <laughs> and you, with a fine stout neck, God bless ya. The way you'd be half an hour in great anguish getting your death. If there's that terror of them, you'd be best maybe. I go wandering off like... <clears throat> He saw her, Cain and Abel, on the sides of the Nephin Rare Spring. But would maybe, for I've heard the circuit judges this place is a heartless crew. So more than judges, this place is a heartless crew. Isn't it a lonesome thing to be starting again? I am a lonesome fellow. To be looking on women and girls the way the needy fallen spirits to be looking on the Lord. What call have you to be lonesome when there's poor girls walking mail in the thousands now? It's well you know what call I have. It's well you know it's a lot of that you could be going past small towns with the light shining sideways when the night is down. Or, draw, or going into strange places with a, a dog noise in before you and a dog noise in behind. Or drawing into the cities where you'd hear a voice making kisses and talking deep love in every shadow of the ditch and you passing on. Empty, hungry stomach failing from your heart. 
I'm thinking you're an odd man. Christy Mavin, the oddest walking fella ever set eyes on to this hour today. What would any be but odd men and they living lonesome in this world? I'm not odd, and I'm me whole life with me father only. And how could a handsome, lovely woman like yourself be lonesome when all men should be thronging around to hear the sweetness of your voice? And the little infant children should be pestering your steps I'm thinking, and you walking the roads? I'm hard set to know which way a coaxing fella the like of yourself should be lonesome either. Coaxing? Aye, would you have me think a man never talked with the girls without the words you've spoken today? It's only that an on yard to be lonesome. The way you'd get around me now. I wish to God I was letting on. But I was lonesome at all times. I'm born lonesome. I'm thinking it's the moon of dawn. Well, it's a story I'm not understanding at all, Christy Mappin. The way you'd be worse off than another. And you, a fine lad with a great savagery to destroy your dad. It's little I'm understanding myself. Saving only my heart scalded this day. And I going off stretching out the earth between us. The way I'm up to wake and near you another dawn of the year until the two of us do arise to hope for judgment with the saints of God. Now I best be going. Let me welcome in the end. For hanging's a poor thing. There's little welcome only is left for me in this house today. Oh, Christy! Come here to me! Lay down that switch and throw some sods on the fire. You're patch boy in this place, and I'll not have you much off from us now. You were saying I'd be hanged if I stay. I'm after going down and reading the fearful crimes of Ireland for two weeks or three. And there wasn't a word of your murder. They've likely not found the body. <laughs> You're safe, so with ourselves. Just making a game of me, you were. I could stay so. Working at your side and not be lonesome from this mortal day. What's to hinder your staying? Except the widow woman or the young girls would have been <coughs> you off. I'll have your words from this day filling my two ears. And that look has come upon you, meeting my eyes. And I, <laughs> watching you, laughing in the warm sun, or rinsing your ankles when the night is come. I'm thinking you'll be a loyal young lad to have working around. <laughs> And if you vexed me a while since with your league and with the girls, I, I wouldn't give a thrunneen for a young lad to have a mighty spirit in him and a gamey heart. Well, I, I was passing below, and I seen your mountainy sheep eating cabbages in Jimmy's field. Oh! Die. Run up, or they'll be bursting surely. God meant them. I best go to her aid, maybe I'll have the use. <laughs> she, can, she can do that much. And there is Shanine has long speeches for her to tell you now. Do you see that, mister? They have a ticket to the Western States. I'll give it to you. And my new hat, and my breeches, with the double seat, and my new coat is woven from the blackest shearings for three miles around. I'll give you the whole of them, I and my blessing, and the blessing of Father Riley itself, maybe, if you'll quit from this and leave us in the peace we had to last night at the fall of dark. But for what is it you're wanting to get short of me? I'm a poor scholar, with midland faculties to coin a lie. So I'll tell you the truth, Christy Mahan. I'm waiting with Pegine beyond, and I don't think well of having a clever, fearless man the like of you dwelling in her house. And you'd be using bribery for to banish me. Let's not take it badly, Mr. Honey. Is it beyond the best place for you, where you'll have uh, golden chains and shiny coats, and <laughs> you riding upon hunters with the ladies of the land. It's true for him, and you best quit off and not have that poor girl setting her mind on you. For there, Shanine thinks she wouldn't suit you. The wall is saying that she'll wed you now. But she wouldn't suit you. And she with the devil's own temper, the way you'd be strangling one another in a score of days. It's the like of me only that she's fit for. A quiet, simple fellow wouldn't raise a hand upon her if she scratched itself. Fit them clothes on you anyhow, young fellow, and he'd maybe loan them to you for the sports. Fit them on, and you can give your answer when you have them tried. I will then. I'd like a 
They're soft to see me in them tweets and laugh. <laughs> He'd like herself to see them. He'll not meme us with O'Quinn. He's a score of devils in him, the way it's well nigh certain he will wed Piggy. It's true, all girls are fond of courage and do hate the like of you. <laughs> <laughs> Widow Quinn, what will he do it now? I did form again him, but he'd burst from Kilmainham, and he'd be sure and certain to destroy me. If I wasn't so God-fearing, I'd near have courage to come behind him and run a pike into his side. Oh, it's a hard case to be an orphan and not have your father that you're used to, who you'd easy kill and make yourself a hero in the sight of all. <laughs> Will you find me a contrivance when I've promised you a you? A you's a small thing. But what would you give me if I did wed him and did save you so? You. Aye, would you give me the red cow you have, and the mountainy ram, and the right of way across your right path, and a load of dung at Michaelmas, and turbury upon the western hill? I would, surely. And I'd give you the wedding ring I have, and the loan of a new suit, the way you'd have him decent on the wedding day. I'd give you two kids for your dinner, and a gallon of pachine, and I'd call the piper on the long car to your wedding from Crossmanaya or, or from Balada. I, I'd give you. do so unless you wished for these coming now again. <gasps> if you've seen yourself <laughs> now, I'm thinking you'd be too proud to speak to us at all. And it would be a pity, surely, to have your like sailing from Mayo to the Western world. I'm not going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if this be a poor place itself. I'd make myself contented to be lodged here. Well, I'm going, uh, measuring the race course while the tide is low, so I'll leave you the garments and my blessing with the sports today. God bless you. <laughs>